Hello everybody, today we are going to be taking a look at a floor lamp. Now, obviously I don't really take a look at floor lamps here on the channel, but this one is an exception, and you'll see why in a second. Anyway, I picked this up at the ReStore a while ago for $2, and the reason I got it for so cheap is it was falling apart. It was really rattly. It just had to be tightened up, of course, with the rod in the middle, but they didn't really understand that, and they really were just going to get rid of it. But anyway, here it is. It did not come with a lamp shade. I picked this up separately at the Value Village for $4. It's brand new. It smells brand new anyway, so I can't be upset there. So, what makes this lamp so special? Well, what's inside of it? Have you ever seen anything like this? I know I certainly hadn't until I spotted this while walking into the ReStore. In fact, this bulb in the middle was in one of these side sockets, and when I was outside and saw it in the window, I was like, what in the world is that? Well, this thing is called the Micro Sun, and it says it right there on the bulb. This uses a special 68-watt metal halide bulb and two 25-watt incandescent bulbs. Here I'm using some filament LED bulbs as it didn't come with any certain bulbs. You don't need to use a specific kind, you can use anything really. Um, but the middle bulb is a proprietary unique bulb to this electronically ballasted fixture. So yeah, this is an interesting lamp. And there's the bottom of it. We have two switches. One for the individual incandescent lamps, and one for the micro sun, or the metal halide lamp. So let me go ahead and take this lampshade off for a better view. Now we have a better look at all the components. So of course, we have the electronically ballasted housing here. And you can kind of see inside of it there, the uh, green PCB and different components and the two sockets on the side. As you can tell, they originally wanted this to be used with 25 watt incandescent bulbs, I'm sure for heat reasons or something. Um, of course, filament LEDs don't get anywhere near as hot as incandescents, so the wattage that it outputs light-wise doesn't really matter. Install this end up. So I'm assuming that this lamp would have come disassembled and you'd have to assemble it yourself, uh, being that it was a catalog only type thing from what I can tell on their website. Uh, some more information about Micro Sun that I was finding online is that they are a division of Venture Lighting, and I suppose that's why their logo here on the bulb looks very much like a Venture bulb. Everything in the font, just everything about it looks very much like their type of quality. Let's spin it around here. Nothing really different on this side. One thing that is interesting to note is that this uses just the standard plastic base for the 68 watt metal halide bulb. Now, the other versions that I've seen online and still on their website to this day use a standard uh, pulse rated ceramic socket, which you think would be needed here as well, but I'm not entirely sure. This must be one of the first models of their micro sun fixtures. Now these come in desk lamps, uh, or at least lamps you can put on a table, and floor lamps like this. And if you venture onto their website to take a look at one of these lamps, you will be surprised by the price of these things. At least I was. This thing goes for almost $500. Yeah, you heard that right. $500 for a floor lamp. And at least to me, there's nothing entirely special about it other than this part here at the top. Now, I was very much surprised by the quality of the lamp itself. It's very high quality. So I suppose that's part of it. I mean, part of it's the engineering that went into creating a electronic ballast that is absolutely silent for this thing. So I'm sure, you know, there's points to why it costs so much. But anyway, here's this one. And as we saw before, this one has the two switches on the bottom. And uh, interestingly enough, 
A week ago, I found another one of these things at Goodwill. However, I didn't pick it up. Here's a picture of the one that I saw at Goodwill. Uh, as you can tell, this one has the same type of bulb adapter thing at the top of the lamp with two separate regular bulbs on the sides and a metal halide bulb in the center. Now, obviously, the metal halide bulb is missing here, um, but I, I do believe... I'm not looking at the picture while I'm recording this, it had a ceramic socket. And at the bottom of it, as you can see, it has like a clock and timer and switches for that um, metal halide adapter thing at the top of the lamp. So this one definitely has a lot more going on where the table, or sorry, floor lamp that I found is much more simple with just two switches on it. Let's see if we can get a close up look at the bulb itself. So inside we can see the construction for the protective sleeve over the metal halide arc tube you can see there. I don't really see anything too different about it compared to a standard metal halide bulb. Obviously it is good that it has the protection around the arc tube as you can see. I also read online somewhere that these are powered by DC instead of AC current. And I suppose that is another thing to do with a lamp. It's, it's a lamp, after all. You can turn it on for a little bit and turn it off, so maybe the DC current helps with a hot restrike. I'm not entirely sure, and I've never tried that, to be honest. But there you can see the arc tube right in the middle. Now, this bulb does come out. You can obviously and certainly replace it. And it's a standard size of a 70 watt metal halide bulb, but all the 70 watt metal halide bulbs that I have won't even fit in here because of this collar that is around the socket itself. Let's see, is there a name on the socket down in there? Uh, I don't see one, it's a TRI, I'm not sure. Anyway, it's just a standard socket down in there, but you can't really put any other bulb in it that has a bigger neck because it won't fit. There's the inside of the bulb again, and it's etch. With one of the bulbs removed, we can take a look inside a little bit. You can see we have a standard Leviton socket in there, and it even has a screw terminal on the side. So they just got this out of something else and put it in here. I'm sure the newer ones, I didn't take a look, um, don't have a standard Leviton style socket in there. I'm sure it's all soldered together at this point. But yeah, you can see the screw terminals there on either side. That's pretty cool. Interesting. Well, anyway, we got to turn off all these lights here so we can enjoy this one. So the only light that we have is a nightlight over here in the corner and uh, the windows around the other wall. But let's go ahead and start with the two incandescent or filament LEDs in this case, uh, bulbs. So this option, just turns on the two separate lights and leaves the metal halide bulb off. So if you want just a soft light, I suppose you could put whatever you want in here, really. If you want just a dim option, you could do that. Now, they did advertise, at least on the website, the last time I looked at, that there's three levels of light. Well, I can only find two because here we have the level of light where it's just the two bulbs on the sides. And if we turn that off, this one... There we go. Turns on both of these and the metal halide. So you get really two steps. Maybe the new ones have three and you can choose between them. But here we just have uh, either the two side bulbs or all three at the same time. So let's get a better view of just the metal halide bulb here by turning off the filament LEDs. Oh, I li really liked that green color there for a second. That was awesome. So everything around it right now very much has a mercury vapor feel and look to it and has a little bit of a glow from the UV light. Ooh, there we had a little bit of a flash. It'll do that a couple times as it's slowly warming up. But as you can tell, it's getting to full brightness here pretty quickly. And of course, being an indoor lamp, a customer would want something like that that's you know, now, not I have to wait five minutes for my light to warm up. So 
I'm, I'm, I'm thinking at this point, we're pretty much at full brightness. And this thing, I can't even hear. All I can hear is the airplane outside and the fact that it's incredibly windy. It is very quiet. And the light it puts off is very nice. It's very pleasant. Uh, definitely a little bit mercury vapor E. Uh, the fact with the anything that can kind of fluoresce or isn't like the highest quality plastics. Like I had to replace this um, outlet adapter thing here in the back because there was nothing wrong with it. I just had to use that one somewhere else because it was smaller. But this one um, kind of has that plasticky, that glow to it that a UV light would provide. Interesting. So, yeah, we got to be at full brightness at this point. I haven't seen it get any brighter while I was talking about the outlets here, but I thought I'd give it a little bit of time. Yeah, it's as bright as, as I'd expect out of a 70-watt metal halide bulb. But uh, maybe they used 68 watts to keep it unique, so you couldn't use a 70 watt. Or maybe it's a whole unique bulb altogether, being that its ballast is uh, direct current instead of AC. Now, these are things that I remember uh, reading online, so I could totally be wrong. And if you have any information about this light and how it works and runs, please leave it in the comments down below. I'd be very interested to learn more about this unique thing. So, we can put our side bulbs back in here. And that's the full thing right there. Let's see what it looks like. Without the shade on, it lights up the area quite well. As you can see, no issues there. Of course, I like having all my fluorescent lights on. But it's definitely nice and bright, and you can definitely work underneath it. No problems, as that's what they market this as, as a type of working and crafting light. So it's definitely nice and bright and full spectrum looking at the different colors around here in the shop. Let's put the shade on and see what we get there. Definitely cuts down on the amount of light that is output, but it's much easier to look at. And uh, I kind of like the color. It's a, it's a white shade, but it's a very nice color. I, I do like that with the mix of the metal halide and the two separate bulbs there. Now, this obviously, as I've mentioned before, is not the original shade, and I wonder if they had a special shade for this thing, being that uh, this bulb would obviously put out a lot of heat. It's not as hot as I'd expect for my hand being directly above it, to tell you the truth. Um, but when I was looking for a shade, I wanted one like this with a big open top to make sure that it's far enough away from the heat of the metal halide bulb in the center. Not bad at all. Let me turn off those two incandescents. So now it's just the metal halide. I, I unscrewed the two filament LEDs that I keep calling incandescents. It's definitely dimmer. I still like the color of it though. Okay, so we're human. We do human things like turn off the light, leave the room, and then come back a minute later because we wanted to do something else or forgot something. So what if you do that with this light? I mean, metal halide lights are usually outside or in a gymnasium or somewhere where they're on for an extended period of time and aren't constantly cycled on and off. So what if you come into the room or you're done and you just turn it off, you know? Okay, I'm done doing my crafting or soldering or whatever. And I'm just going to go leave, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Oh, this thing's taking a little bit to cool down. But then you come back. You're like, oh, I wanted to continue doing that. Let me, let me turn that back on. Let's see what we get. Nothing. Okay. So it doesn't have an instant restrike. And um, it's definitely on. I can screw these in. And we do have power to it. So... I'm wondering how long it'll take before it does restrike. Obviously, it must need to cool down like a standard metal halide bulb. So, yeah, let's see how long that takes. Oh, we got something happening there. Looks like we've got an arc back in the arc tube. 
So I'll have some type of counter on the screen that'll tell us how long that took. But it definitely isn't instant, and we do have to wait for it. And I suppose that's why they put these bulbs in the equation as well. So if you have to wait for it because you left and wanted to come back, at least you have those for light in the meantime. It is getting to full brightness very quick though, and again is incredibly quiet. Let's put these balls back in. And we'll put the shade back on. Well, I really do hope you enjoyed this video of this Micro Sun floor lamp with its mix of metal halide and incandescent or LED bulbs. It's definitely a unique one and a very cool find. Once again, I do hope you enjoyed and also please come rate, share and subscribe and thank you very much for watching.